Hi everyone, welcome to A Couple of Crafters. My name is Robert and this is my wife Karina. This is actually our first YouTube vi video, so welcome. Thanks for joining us. And uh, we're actually gonna be doing a, a wonderful home decor project today. Uh, a, a wall project, a wall art project. Show them what we're gonna be doing, Karina. We're gonna be doing um, a little bit of a home decor. This is a copper craft and it's going to be a feather and you can kind of get a little close up of that and you can kind of see that it's a little raised. And uh, a lot of people say, hey, Karina, I've never done anything like this. Um, I don't have any skills on copper or art. You're going to be pleasantly surprised today. Okay, guys. So what we're going to be doing again is our copper crafting. As you can see, you're probably going to need some copper and you're going to need some wood. So I'm going to go ahead and go over all of our supplies. And um, this one is going to be a little bit tricky because you are going to need a certain kind of copper. And believe it or not, they sell it in rolls like this. Like now, where, where'd you get that at? Um, well, you know, you can get some of this at Hobby Lobby. I don't know if you can get it at Michael's. I usually get mine online through um, DickBlick.com. So they're, they're pretty good about it. And actually, you can see it says 36 gauge on there. Um, I've got the aluminum one here and I've got a copper one. So if you're like, hey, Karina, you know, maybe I'm not into the copper, you can actually get it in aluminum. Mm. And let me see if I can uh, get this out without cutting myself. You will not be, mm. um, you would be surprised at how, um, how sharp this stuff is. Mm. So Are there can, different kind, types of gauges out there? There is, there is. So you don't want to get one that is really, really stiff. You can kind of see this one, you know, you can roll up and, and it's a little bit pliable, but you can't get it too soft, so um, you can't use aluminum foil for this. Mm. <laughs> so um, this is our copper, so you're going to need, um, you know, enough to roll that out and to have a little feather on here. Uh-oh, you almost cut yourself right there, didn't you? <laughs> yeah guys be careful um, we actually have some gloves that uh, this is again another um, another uh, I guess a safety sa tip well safety tip but another part of your supplies that you need are and gloves. these are called Gorilla Grip um, you can get some other kind of I think they're called um, I don't know if they're like nitrile gloves or something mm. but these are not like our regular um, Medical Just gloves like that. Gloves, yeah. You don't want this kind because this yeah. really isn't going to help you at all. Yeah. That's that metal's going to go right through it. This is they're kind of they're kind of thick. You yeah, they're they're that. more they're thicker than these uh, latex gloves for sure. Yeah, so, so you you definitely want some kind of thick gloves. Now again, uh, don't use your your winter gloves because you can't manipulate your fingers enough mm -hmm. with that. So right. so no winter gloves, no mittens. Ah, mittens, yeah. <laughs> Okay, we will actually need some of these gloves, uh, you know, just some regular vinyl or latex gloves. That's for later because we're going to need to stain or paint our, our feather. And there you go. And so this is just going to help protect that your hands don't get dirty. Right. Well, do you think we need aprons as well? Or oh, should we roll up our sleeves and stuff you like that? You definitely, that's a good point. Yeah. You definitely want to wear something that uh, you're okay with getting paint on. Uh, yeah. Uh, I know you were crying the other day because you got a little bit of glue on I, there. Sometimes I cry. I cry. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. Sometimes I cry. Um, one of the reasons why you probably will need an apron and these gloves is I've got my whole set of awesome, sweet, um, these are alcohol, alcohol inks. Yeah. You don't need to have this many. Maybe just one color, maybe two colors. Maybe you're like, hey, I'm really into purple, so I've got like three shades of purple. That's okay. Yeah. So again, and and guys, alcohol inks for this project, they're, they're basically, that's what we have to use. We I don't think we can use acrylic or we can't use oils. This basically, I think it's oil. Yeah, uh, this project does alcohol. call for the alcohol inks because that's what kind of makes it look a little cooler, especially on the copper because it's kind of transparent. Be really careful with these. Um, I will go over a few little safety uh, factors because sometimes. Um, I, I've heard horror stories, believe it or not, where mm -hmm. a, a crafter's working on alcohol inks in their little craft room and they forget to um, get to open a door and let's just say oh, wow. fire is involved. So. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah, yeah guys, um, disclaimer, uh, 
we we definitely want you guys to be be safe with all of these different um, uh, different supplies. So read directions. If you if they do suggest that you have to open up a door uh, for ventilation, please just be careful when with with any of this stuff, especially like we talked about these gloves, and then like Karina mentioned ventilation too okay thank you osha well you're very <laughs> i should have had my hard hat, hard hat on well and talking about uh kind of ventilation and fumes and whatnot you are gonna need a, a pretty uh tough glue so my favorite my go-to is always the e6000 yeah. um you can get this at home depot michael's mm. hobby lobby wherever walmart um just make sure to get the one that's clear because it does come in a white oh, and yes. i have accidentally picked up the white sometimes so that, that's not gonna work for this project so again uh just a kind of a i don't want to say industrial because that sounds kind of scary um you know maybe like super glue or, or something like that not not elmer's yeah not elmer's yeah. okay let's keep going um you're gonna need scissors and they're just regular scissors um but they are larger scissors so uh no blunts Go. Okay, and then wow. of course we have wood um, that we actually measure this, and this is uh, what was it about eleven inches or something mm -hmm. like that. So this is a this is a one by four um, piece of wood. If you can see that, this is one inch by four inches. So this works the best. Okay. Well, why don't you go ahead and tell them about why it's got the blue tape on? It. Um, what do they call that when it when it starts? Um, the the the, um, the wood kind of starts it, it's when you're sawing your wood it may get a little raggedy um, unless you have like a really nice jigsaw that's gonna get you a really clean cut yeah but this is this is a good way to avoid um, again that the splintering it's called splintering that, that's what I was looking for um, if you put tape on there this is just uh, regular uh, painters, painters tape, tape yeah. and you put that on there and it, and it can help reduce that splintering effect and here's where Robert really comes in handy because I didn't want to lose any digits. Mm -hmm. um, so he did a lot of the, the handy I don't work. think they got the, she actually uh, did yeah, it like this. Um, it's, it's actually there. She's fine. <laughs> um, the other thing you're going to need, since we're working with wood, we're going to need sandpaper. You're going to say, hey, Karina, what grit? Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Okay. It doesn't matter as long as it, you get rid of that really harsh edge. If you've got a little bit of jaggedness, you're just going to be doing that. So whatever you have, don't make a special trip to Home Depot. I'm sure you've got something in your toolbox or mm -hmm. in the kitchen uh, junk drawer or something mm -hmm. to that effect. All right. You're going to need some. These are just uh, boxes of nails. Now, these nails, they're a little special. They look decorative. Um, they are decorative, so you're probably only going to find them in a smaller quantity. Uh, you, I found these at Home Depot, and what they are are they're they're copper. So you can kind of see right there, they're copper. And I've got two boxes here, and I'm going to tell you why. Uh, when I was in a hurry trying to finish a project, I just ran to the store and and grabbed the first copper uh, set of nails. And when I came and I tried to finish my project there's not enough head on these nails they were a little too tiny on the top mm -hmm. so and we're gonna be putting a little bit of glue on the top of these these are uh, three-fourths inch in length and let's one of those out uh, let's see what you're talking yeah, about I, you I don't know if, uh, if you can see that yeah let's let's go a little bit closer and maybe right in there and we'll show you once we kind of start working on our project you want to make sure you got enough of that head on there. So um, the right ones, and, and I'll go ahead and put it in the description of mm -hmm. the video so you can kind of make sure you've got the, the exact size. These are called boat nails, and they're one inch. Is that, which one is it? Is this guy? That one's a three-fourths inch. That's the wrong one. Oh, this is, okay. Yeah. Let's see if, um, let's see if we can put this up to the camera right quick. Okay, let's see if you can see that. All right. Um, you're either gonna need a really dull pencil, so don't sharpen it up, or you're going to need what we call a wood stylus, mm. and um, it looks like a wannabe pencil without um, a lead. 
And all this is, is just, it's a point of some sort. So that's what you're going to need right there. Um, ooh, now here's the real stuff. This is called a stylus, and I'm just going to get a little bit closer so you guys can see what a stylus is. It's actually got like a little ball at the end, and this one actually has two sizes. That one's a big one, that one's a small one, and this one's just another uh, example of it. These you can get over at um, Hobby Lobby or um, Michael's or even online. And let's see what else we need. Oh, um, what you're actually going to be doing now, maybe you're like not into feathers. Maybe mm -hmm. you're not into feathers. Maybe you want to do a, a uh, surfboard. Ah, yeah. oh, kind yeah. of the same shape. Kind of, sort of, yeah. Uh, maybe you want to do a surfboard. All you have to do that is, is um, either have a piece of paper or a printout of what you want at the actual size. You know, it'd be cool, a guitar. Ooh, that ooh, that I like cool. cool. We're going to talk about our shapes here in a minute. Okay. Um, this is, and you can kind of feel that, Robs. Mm. This is just foam. Uh, foam. And it's like craft foam. Mm. So like when you go to, I keep Pliable. mentioning Hobby Lobby. I'm not getting paid by them, guys. Um, this is actually really thick. That's going to be like, what, yeah. a quarter of an inch, Robs? Uh... That's a quarter of an inch. It's if it's a, if it's an eighth of an inch. Okay. <laughs> so that means yes. Yes. And the reason why I'm saying that is you're gonna need something to use your stylus on. So when we're gonna be pressing onto our copper, you can't just put it on your table because oh. it's not going. It's like to. a mat, right? Exactly. Oh, but okay, it, it's gotta it's gotta be thick. Ah, and I know some of you uh, may have like the thinner sheets of uh, foam, craft foam. That's not gonna work. Mm. Yeah, I've tried it. So, how learn, about that, how learn about that big? It. How about that thick uh, pink foam that we have? The thick pink foam, um, maybe a little too impressionable. Oh yeah, you're right. So what? It, so what kind of foam is this again? It's it's like a. It's like a really thick sheet. I actually have the. Um, uh, this was actually six millimeters thick. This one I got from uh, Hobby Lobby. It's called Little Makers. It says foam sheet. This was a nine by twelve. So what I did is I cut it in half mm -hmm. so that you and I could work um, at the same time. Ah, yeah, teamwork makes very the of you. dream work. Ah, all right. With that one, huh? Did you just make that one up? No. Okay. And finally, we are going to need some some kind of uh, eye, eye glass. Or, yeah, eye protection. Yes. And. Um, I know I just uh, and you don't have any that's my I, I don't, don't have any but actually. but I will when we start so very important guys I know some of you are like oh, I don't want to have to go look for gloves I don't want to have to look for uh, eye protection right it's well worth it on yeah. this project Believe and me. yeah these are you know buy these things once you can use them for for a long time guys so um, so it's and then glasses you can just wear if you wear glasses you can just wear your own uh, glasses that you, you use for reading, of course. Right, you right. You have to go out and buy special uh, safety glasses. So. And, and again, he's right. You know, these are one-time purchases that you'll be using over and over again because surely you're going to like our video today yeah. and you're going to want to come back or subscribe to our channel. Right? Yes, please subscribe to our channel and, 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 and put in some notes uh, in the comments below what other projects you want to see us do because where there's a will, there's, there's Robin and Karina. Okay, so we're just going to roll this out. I'm going to try something a little different here. Robert, you're just going to come in here. You're going to use your stylus, your wood stylus, and you're just going to outline your feather. Okay, I got it. I'm going to move this over, guys, so you can see a little better. And if you guys will notice, he's got his gloves on. Um, I actually put my um, my other gloves on because the less amount of oil touches this, the better. So just be really careful. Remember your, your safety goggles or your glasses. I'm just gonna hold that for you. And pr you can press hard. Um, I know you had asked me earlier, Robs, if we needed our foam yet. We don't need our foam yet. 
And if you fudge it a little bit, we're cool. That's what makes art unique, right? Exactly. Do you want to go ahead and do your line right in here? Oh, yeah. Um, I'm just going to... Um, yeah, I'm just going to go for it, guys. So, meow. You're a brave little soldier. Okay, and then we're not doing that other one, though. All right, so... Okay. Oh, you... Can I go ahead and just yep. do my little guy right in here? So I'm going to try to maximize the amount of, uh, of copper we're going to be using. So I kind of make sure where his is. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just going to sit here and do that with my feather. You can kind of, well, you can't really see my feather very much, but I'm cool, okay with that because I'm just gonna come back right in here and retrace it. No harm, no foul. And I'm gonna let the, the Grand Scissor Master over here just kind of roughly cut it. Okay. Just. Just give me a chop right here and just kind of right. get mine out of the way. And let's watch where. I know we got a lot of glare going on, guys, but I promise it'll get better. I'm just going to cut the rest of it. All right. Now be really careful, try not to bend this too much. Yeah, and guys, instead of putting your fingers on um, the inside of your feather, try to put it on the outside of the feather. And you can turn your feather. However, so, wherever your hands Turn your feel feather more however, however you want. Your feather however? Exactly. All right, I got mine. You already did yours? Well, no, I, I just oh. cut it. I'm quick, but not that quick. You want to have a race? Ready, set, go. I'm winning, I'm winning. Try not to bend it too much. Got an extra little bump somewhere. That's okay. I got a skinny little feather. Oh, Is it a manly feather? <laughs> yeah. Manly feather. Look. Remember to keep all of these scraps. Um, you could always do a really cool uh, set of earrings or some other project, maybe a little ornament, but um, that's where you guys come in because if you see something you really like and you're like, hey, Karina, I know you did a copper project the other day, but did you ever try doing X? Um, yep, yeah, guys, put it in the comments below if you want to see any project for copper or anything for that matter. Um, let us know and, and uh, and we'll get that knocked out where there's a will, there's Rob and Karina. And let us be uh, your um, the people who figured out for you. Okay. So we're going to be using our foam. And remember, the thicker one mm -hmm. is better. Uh, I wouldn't really use like cloth because cloth is not going to do it. It's got to be a little bit firm. So we're going to put our stuff right in here. And if you need to kind of press down... Cool. You're still wearing your gloves, everyone. Everyone wearing their uh, safety goggles. We're going to be using our oh. stylus. Yeah, put that away. Put that away. I always give you the good stuff. Thank you. You can use the big one. There's two sides to this. There's a really big ball right on this side, and there's a smaller one here. Guys, this is art. Make it your own. If you decide, hey, I want to use the, the big chunky one because that gives me bigger lines, that's great. If you want to go all detailed, you can use this little guy. Maybe you can use both because you're just that talented. Okay, let's do this. So I'm going to start off with my line. I know he kind of did his line. I forgot to do my line. I'm going to come in here, and I'm going to press down. Hey, hold that feather while you're doing this. You don't want it to kind of slip away. And when you're doing a line, I'm always looking ahead. I'm not looking at the actual place where my line is. I did it once. Guess what I'm gonna do again? 
I'm gonna do one right next to it. Boom. Don't be afraid. I'm just going for it. Oh, this is really therapeutic. Mm, that was pretty good. Ta -da. All right, guys. Let's see what you got, Robs. <laughs> How's that? I'm feeling a little intimidated. Really? It's the sound effects. Let's take a look. Okay, All right. I'm, I'm cool with that. All right, guys. So we're going to turn this. Once you did that on one side, you're going to turn your feather the other way. Now, here's where if you had that extra piece of copper, I'm going to give you a little piece of copper rock right in there. We're going to practice on here before we actually do the real stuff. Maybe I'll give you it. I'm feeling more generous. I'll give, you, I'll give you that one. So I'm gonna put this aside for right now. Let's do a little bit of practice. And what I wanna do is, you can kinda of see, you gotta press hard, because if you press too lightly, you're not gonna get anything except a little scratch on there. So you can kinda of see, Rob's how I pressed a little harder. This is a little bit lighter. Don't press too hard, because if you press too hard, then you're gonna get something like this, and look at how much I bent that. Mm -hmm. So it's a happy medium. Um, you can practice, you know, maybe doing a little swirl or maybe some lines or even doing X's, hearts. The perfect circle. Watch this, guys. Let me see. Not really. How's that one? Well, that's a good one. All right. So once you feel comfortable practicing on here, I'm going to throw that away. And we're going to come back to our feather. Remember, you're not using the side where you did your lines. You did your lines here. You wanna flip it over. Yeah, you're, you're good, you're good, right in here. And let's start our design. And here's where you're gonna be like, oh my gosh, I don't know what to do. Don't crack under the pressure, Robs. I always start at the bottom. Mm -hmm. And you kinda just kinda flow. Maybe you want some curls. Maybe you just want some cool lines like this. I know we talked about some hearts just like that maybe you want to come in here and do some circles and then come back in here and start filling it in with lines you can definitely do that oh this actually kind of looks like a peacock eye right in there Robs. okay let's see what you got this is not a competition I don't know what that was. <laughs> <laughs> I said I'm winning. No, the design I just did. Oh. Well, let's take a look. Maybe yours is a more organic. You're, you've got a feather that looks like tree bark. Okay. You're just supposed to say, I meant to do that. Look what I'm doing, Rob. So I'm doing a few little, like, little uh, scalloped edges right in here. Oh, yeah. Isn't that cool? Well, that's kind of neat. Maybe you do want to do some lines one way and then maybe some lines the other way. There's no right or wrong here, guys. Just kinda go like, for it. I'm doing kind of like branches. Yeah? Yeah. Are you going to put an apple in those branches? Uh, <laughs> I don't know how to do an apple, to tell you the truth. I'm going to turn this upside, well... No, I'm not flipping it. I'm just turning it the other way because my hand feels more comfortable that way. I'm left-handed, so I do everything backwards. And let's keep going. Now, here's where I always tell people, don't think too much about it. Are you thinking too much about it? Nah, not really. Okay, cool. I mean, it just, whatever comes out, comes out. Maybe I want to put a couple circles right in here. Oh, that's a half a circle. I really love hearts. I put hearts in a lot of stuff. Uh-oh, this one turned into a flower, Robs. Check this out. What do you think? Wow. All right. That's actually, uh, show them how to do a flower. Well, so I did my circle. Now I'm coming in here. And I'm just kind of doing a scalloped edge around here. And even what do you mean by scalloped edge? Where I just kind of go like that. 
Oh, okay. You know, the, the kind of flowers you did in first grade, but they look so much cooler in copper. Yeah. So since I did one and a second one, sure, I'll do a third one. And I'm actually nice. going to, ooh, I'm going to connect these, maybe add some leaves. Boom. Wow. Okay, it's looking nice so far. Don't forget the dots. And it's never too late. If you come back and you're like, oh my gosh, I can't believe this site looks so plain. You can always come back and, and add a little bit more of a design. And uh, I'm almost done. So again, not too much pressure, but some pressure. Now, some of you are your own worst enemies. You're gonna say, oh my gosh, this looks like crap. It doesn't, I, I promise you. It's gonna look artsy, it's okay. gonna look really uh, crafty. And there we go. Now, we're gonna flip this over. Flip yours over, Rob. Boom, wow. Now that looks nice. Now, if I came back and I, I looked at mine and I was like, ooh, I, it looks kind of plain here. I want to add some dots. Just turn that bad boy around and add a few more dots. Yeah, guys, and in the comments, uh, let us know who who's you like better, Mona <gasps> Karina. Well, we got to know. We got to know. <laughs> I told you it wasn't a competition. <laughs> okay, so we're done with that step. Pick this one, guys. Now, I know we both use gloves on our copper, but we're gonna have to clean that copper because we wanna make sure that these alcohol inks that we're going to put on here are going to really stick. So, um, again, I've got alcohol here, uh, and this is rubbing alcohol, not the drinking kind, mm. Robert. But guys, if you are over the, uh, the, uh, the legal age to drink and wanna partake in uh, some, um, libations and refreshments of the adult kind. Uh, this is a great opportunity to get some wine or beer and, uh, you know. Or even your yeah. favorite coffee. How about that? Yeah, your favorite. Exactly. All right. Um, I did forget to mention that we will need paper towels for this next part. And I'm kind of just folding it like this. I'm going to grab some alcohol. And some of you are going to say, was it 90% alcohol or 70%? Does that matter? Here you go. There you go. And all we're going to do is we're going to clean the surface very gently, but you got to make sure you get everything on the area that is our, our top, not the back side. Like we don't care about the back side. And I like to be a little bit thorough on here, Rob. So really? I uh, did a, a cactus where uh, the ink was not adhering and I just, it was driving me crazy. I thought I was going crazy and then I realized once I cleaned it. So did you not clean it first? Uh, you know, it was my first one, so I was, so I was just kind of You didn't clean it? I, I didn't. Oh, okay. Okay, we're gonna let that dry for a minute, and we're gonna get our alcohol inks. Hey guys, if you've seen any value out of this today, uh, this little tutorial, please hit that, um, hit that, hit that like button for us, please. I'm going to pick um, a couple of my favorite colors. And again, these are alcohol inks. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to pick some really fun fiesta -y colors. Um, really, Rob, it's up to you how many colors. I wouldn't recommend going all crazy like six or seven colors. Uh, keep it simple because the copper already looks so pretty. I've mm -hmm. actually uh, done one where it was all just one color. And that looked fabulous too. So um, here's where your personality kind of uh, pops. I've also tried uh, some of the Liquitex uh, inks. That does work nice, but I really prefer the uh, just the regular inks, uh, alcohol inks. And again, you can get these at any craft store. Oh. You really have to wear gloves for this next step. Robert is getting ready to switch gloves because he's going to need just the regular latex gloves, not the... 
not the thicker ones. So let's go ahead and get you. There you go. All right. I'm going with my high school colors, grays and blues. Go Side Creek, rah rah. Okay, let's get these out of our way. And Karina went with the uh, the red and what was that other color? It's actually kind of like a magenta color and a turquoise. My favorites. What is that color? That that, that other blue color? I might use some of that. What the too. turquoise one? Oh, that's turquoise. Yeah, it's turquoise. Okay, so a couple of things about um, alcohol inks. Number one, make sure it's a ventilated area. Uh, I've actually got my craft door open. Number two, make sure you're not smoking while you're crafting. That could be dangerous. These are very flammable, believe okay. it or not. Uh, so no, no cigar smoking and, and beer drinking while you're doing this, Rob's. Secondly, oh. I, I, I picked a bad day to quit smoking then, yeah, or a sorry. good day to quit smoking. <laughs> Um, this stuff will really stain your fingers, mm. your clothing, your table. Um, I really don't care about this because this is black, so eh, whatever happens, happens. So just make sure whatever you're going to be uh, painting on, you're okay with either throwing it away or, you know, getting it stained. Um, I'm going to open up our, oh, I'm sorry. We got to shake it, Rob. Just mm. a little bit, just a little bit. Especially uh -oh. that, that silver one has got a ball in it, the metallic one, so uh, make sure to shake that one really well. You guys are going to notice Robert just put a couple of, uh, of um, Q-tips here. Uh, that was not in the original uh, list. Sorry, guys. I'm winging it as I go along. These are going to be really good to use to kind of uh, manipulate your paint around. Um, Robert, you've got three colors, so you can go ahead and and take three of those. I'm gonna be using these two. I don't know if you know this, Robs. No, I don't know if you've, have you used alcohol inks mm -hmm. before? They dry really, really fast. So whatever you're gonna do, just do it quickly. If you put a little something down, I'm actually gonna press down my surface just a little bit so that it everything just doesn't roll off. You're going to be, and, and I'm just pretending here, I'm gonna open these up you're just gonna be doing a few little squirts. Do not squeeze the bottle or else you'll have a hell of a mess. Okay. And, well, usually I end up picking it up, but. And once you do that, if you like it, great. If uh, you can even kind of do a little bit of this, if you need to manipulate it and kind of pull it or push it, use these guys. So, here we go. So once you put just a few drops on there, now I'm gonna come in here and maybe just kinda of do this a little bit. Now you gotta hurry, Robs, remember. That stuff dries pretty uh, pretty quickly. And these are all like jewel tones. Now don't spread it out too much. You're gonna lose your silver on here, just lightly. Can you go over um, colors with different colors? You can. That's where you kind of get some really cool effects. Uh, one of the things that, that I did, now this is not the cactus that, that had I had problems with, but you can kind of see I started off with like a really pretty green, then I put a dark green on top, mm -hmm. and then I put some orange. So you're going to get some really cool effects. Mm -hmm. I always like to just go ahead and just work around it, but again, there, there are no rules in art. Ooh. Make it work for you, Robs. Ooh, if for some reason you mess up and you're like, oh, I didn't want for that to be there, guess what? Put a little alcohol on here, wipe it off, start all over. Ah. Mm -hmm. Now don't press too hard on that, Robs. I feel like you're you're losing a lot of the, the coolness on it. It's like a purple. Don't spread it around too long, too much. See how you're starting to see too much of the copper? And again, Maybe you decide, hey, I, I just want a light wash on there, Karina. I don't want a whole mess of it. Maybe I want to see a lot of the, the copper. That's okay. And then just lightly just kind of work it, work it. And see how it kind of starts going in the crevices? Don't work it too much, Robs. Just let it be. Just 
<laughs> Walk away. Check this out, guys. I'm going to put a little bit of that turquoise on top of my red. Boom. Purple. Oh, that flower really turned out nice. I'm kind of digging that. I think I'm going to come in here and maybe add a little bit more red. Oh, I'm sorry. Magenta. So you said that you can actually... Oh, there we go. Interesting. <laughs> Yeah, some of some of them seem like they're a little bit more viscous than the other ones. Like that silver what, did not run very much. Yeah, and you know metallics usually are a little bit more funky. And even that other color didn't really. Oops. Let me get the cap off here. Well, this is more like a fiesta feather. Yeah, I think I, I think I'm just gonna let it run, see what happens. Yeah, you see that, guys, that, that looks, to me, that looks cooler than using the, um, the cotton swab. What, it's it, just kind of letting it do its yeah, thing? Yeah, let it run, but the other ones didn't seem like, let me try this other one again. I mean, you just need a lot of it. You know what I'm doing? I'm going to kind of just put some of this turquoise Whoa. all along my edge, too. That's the really cool thing about these bottles with, like, this tip on there. It lets you kind of manipulate a little bit easier. And so I'm going to put some right in here. Yeah, any with any art project for me at least, I. I'm gonna borrow some of yours. Yeah. Seems like I start off kind of conservatively, and then. Then you rock it, don't you? Well. I try to. I try. Ooh, I put a little too much of your dark blue on here. Yeah. But I'm just gonna wipe some off of it. Maybe spread it around. Is that the color I was using? Yeah. And yeah, you can do a lot of this to where you just yeah. kind of... So I think I'm done with mine. Are you going to put any kind of color that just runs down the... Well, I thought I did. What, was it just the silver? No, originally it was the... Um, the dark blue? Dark... Man! How did you get yours to look like that? <laughs> <laughs> I think... This is what not to do, guys. <laughs> that is what to I do. I think the silver should only be used as an accent, okay. not like a full background, because Can, I promise you, if you add more of that blue here, right try there... To help me out, then. Okay, so let's come in here and let's add a little bit of this, mm, a little bit of this blue and let it do its thing. I know you had talked about that, Robs. Uh, one other thing, the reason why yours looks a lot different than mine is because I have more lines. Mm. You don't have as many lines. Yeah. But I'm going to show you how to bring out those lines a little bit more, so. Yeah, they seem like they're popping a little bit more over there. Did you use this, that much, um, did you use a lot of um, the, the the paint, the, the alcohol inks on yours, or did you just use a little bit? Um, you know, I, I used an average amount. Okay, maybe, so I, guess I, maybe I, I used I a lot. I didn't use too much on mine. You didn't use too much, oh, and okay. when you spread it, you spread it a little too thin. Right. And look at how neat that's already All looking. Right, yeah, that looks better. So again, you're just lightly dabbing it. You're not wiping it off. Oh, yes. See, that, guys, that's what I was doing. For, I, was wipe, I was wiping, really. Oh, you've actually got some really cool stuff going on right here on yeah, the edge. Yeah, that's kind of neat. Uh, add just a little bit more on the edge. We're okay. going to let these dry, guys, and um, we're going to talk about how to maybe bring some of these lines out all the way over to that edge. And you can kind of see, man, I'm glad I wore gloves. As soon as you're done... Make sure to close these. These will evaporate. Mm -hmm. 
I guess you can leave some of that copper showing. Yeah, I've got a little bit of the copper showing there too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think this one, oh, there it is. Not too much of the silver. Remember, the silver oh, should yeah, be an accent. It's not the egg. Because yeah. if not, you should have just used the aluminum instead of the copper, right? Yeah. All right. Let's see. Oh, that's cool. You got to know when to step away. Yeah. Know when to hold them, know when to fold them. All right, guys, uh -oh. we're going to let these dry. We'll see you guys in a minute. So let's work on our wood now. And this part is actually pretty easy. I'm gonna give you guys a couple of examples. You can see on this uh, piece that we've kind of got a little bit of a light gray on there. Mm. Um, and then here's another example. Maybe you want a darker color. This is a dark brown. So really guys, I've actually seen, uh, didn't we see someone at our studio who actually painted this red? So yeah. don't be uh, hampered by, hey, you know, I don't think there's a stain color that that uh, I'm going to like. Because we're actually using... We are using... Acrylic oh. paint. Oh, yeah, we're using acrylic paint. And, you know, one of the things that I might recommend is just look around your home and see what kind of decor you have. And maybe this is an accent color that that's already in your house so this can be kind of something that right that, can... that's a good idea because i know sometimes people get so involved with like hey i really like this green and then they're like oh my gosh it doesn't even match my Anything, house and yeah. and what happens there is uh you end up having to give it away to somebody which is okay because these make great gifts as well there's not any better gift uh than one that's her, created created by yourself yeah so. there you go so. Okay, so what we're gonna start off with, Robert, is we're gonna take off our uh, blue painter tape. And if some of you guys didn't catch that, uh, if you wanna go over why we uh, had this tape on here in the first place, Rob. Yeah, because uh, it, it splinters whenever you cut it with a saw. If you have a, 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 um, a, a rotator saw, then it probably wouldn't splinter as much, but it, I was just using a hand saw. And sometimes around here, you can actually see it right here. It's splintered a little bit. Maybe just a little bit. Yeah, there oh, you okay. go. Yeah, right here, it's splintered a little bit. So even with the tape, um, it could splinter. But that's kind of why you can... Um, why we're doing the next step. You can use the sandpaper on it. All right. So what we're going to do, and like I mentioned before, guys, don't go out there and you know, buy a whole you know, gamut of... Uh, uh, sandpaper. sandpaper just open up that toolbox or go into that garage and see what you got here so what I'm gonna be trying to do uh, is get rid of some of this fuzziness here um, some people actually like to kind of round their corners off and um, here we go so let's go ahead and just uh, sand that off I kind of like the, the rounded edge because it just and it feels a little bit more polished yeah and you're gonna have to decide what side is the side that you're gonna be working on. So one of the reasons why I chose this side is if you look on the back, um, I actually had a, a chunk of wood that came off here and over here. So find the better side, and when you're looking at it, you know, look at you know any imperfections that you may have, and you just pick the nicer side. So we're only doing the front. Well, I say we're only doing the front side. I, I guess we should go ahead and do the back side because you don't want to get all of it, this nastiness right. on here too. And you can even do something like this to where you just kind of, ah. Now for all you fancies that have your your sander, sure, you can, you can use your sander on this step too. Just don't go too crazy. We're trying to keep it simple. Right, and, and if uh, some of uh, I, a mask might um, be advisable too, um, because sometimes the saw, the, um, the saw the sander? No, for, for just uh, using a, a mask, even for this, uh, you might get some sawdust in your face that you might breathe in. So it's up to you guys. Okay, I think I'm happy with what I got here. Right? Yeah, you know, right here, I kind of like that right there. I think I'm going to leave that part. And then th that actually might be on the back. I like this side better. 
Okay, so we're going to get that out of the way. You're just going to get a cloth and you're just going to wipe off any of that excess um, sand. It doesn't sanding. need to be wet at all? Uh, no, I'm, it's actually picking it up right there. Oh, okay. And make sure you remember what side is your good side. Well, you don't have any bad sides. Oh. You know? I did not tell you to say that. Okay, so now we're going to sit here and we're going to choose our colors. And we've got our little um, palettes right here. I'm going to go for the dark brown. I always really like this dark brown because this is just so dramatic with the colors. But if you gray is a new, gray is a new color. Mm -hmm. And this one is a lot grayer. So again, it's up to you how you do it. But uh, I'm going to go with a light gray myself. Okay, so for a light gray. gray you're gonna start off with. Oh, check this out, it does. Some brown. And you're only gonna need a tiny little dot of that black. I know, I know, you just follow me here. Okay. And then white. All right. And it, we're using acrylic paint. If you decide, hey, I wanna stain mine, you can do that. Again, any of these projects, just make it your own. Uh oh. How much white should I do? You're good, you're good. Oh, okay. And then just go ahead and mix that really, really well. Uh, we're using a palette, um, a palette knife, guys, to mix, but if you just have the back end of your paintbrush, show, show them that uh, paintbrush, Karina. If you have a small sure. paintbrush. Um, yeah, if you've got a, a small paintbrush, just, just go ahead use and the use the back it. side of that and just mix, 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 and just wipe, wipe off that back side. I actually wanted this. Ne well, you know what? This never mix with the brushy side of a brush because you'll never get the, the consistent color in here. And, oh, it's just, you ruin your brushes. Not that I'm, I'm not heartbroken on these. These are, our, these are our crappy brushes that we're going to be using today. So let me go ahead and make my dark brown. So I'll just use regular brown with a little bit of black. And I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm just gonna mix, mix. Hey, you know what? Uh, excuse my language, but I'm gonna do a half-assed job of mixing this, because I'm gonna like to see some of that brown and that black mm, streaking yeah. in there. Ah. Matter of fact, I, I might just put a little bit more white in here and kind of do the same thing, and, and not stir it very well. Now, one thing, um, we already know how this is gonna look on our project over here. But if you're wondering, oh my gosh, I, I just don't know if that's the color or, or what color my wood is, if that's gonna actually be my true color over there. Paint on the back side, do a little swatch, grab a little bit and just paint a little bit, let it dry. And it may be that, you know, you keep tweaking your colors two or three times. And then once you get that color, flip it over and here's where we're gonna paint. Don't worry about that backside if you're like, oh, I don't want all of that splotchiness. If you had an extra piece of wood, that's fine too. Um, or if you decide, hey, let me just uh, sand that off as well. Oh yeah, you can. Um, and also, you can also um, get some paint on your paintbrush and, and just do, just start off uh, really lightly and, and you can always build up with uh, more paint for right. a it, thicker it, coat. It, you're exactly right, Robs, because it Thank is better can. for you to go ahead and start off slow than it is to try to go in there and, and fix it later. Yeah. So here we go. Again, you don't need too much, like, we like Robert mentioned. I like to do these long lines just like this. And if it's a little streaky, it's okay. I know I'm gonna get there. Same thing here. Now again, this is a crappy table, so I'm okay with getting um, paint all over my table. One of the other things that's really in, Robert, is, is just kind of that vintage, kind of worn, weathered look. Mm -hmm. Let's show them how to kind of get that look here once we finish painting this wood. And by the way, guys, this dries really fast. So if you'll notice, I'm kind of 
kind of doing a half-assed job of this. Robert's actually kind of taking a different approach if you want to go ahead and, and show them. He's actually going a lot lighter and his is looking a lot more rustic. Okay, I like to I like to really kind of go fast on when I do. Just really go back and forth really fast. It's a little darker than I than I thought it was gonna be. But I'm gonna show you how to kind of pull that up. Okay. So, uh, so surely you did that on purpose. Of course. And I'm wrapping around my edges as well. So you can kind of see what I'm doing right here. I'm also doing that edge. I'm going to be doing this edge and this edge. I'm not going to be doing the back side just because, um, well, no one's going to look back there. We're doing good so far, Robs. Mm -hmm. While we're painting here, don't forget, um, always wear something that you're okay with uh, throwing away because acrylic paint does not come off your clothes once it dries. I've had a couple of people tell me that, you know, you might soak it in alcohol, but... I'm going to uh, steal a little bit of your paint, Karina. Ah. Just to... Now, if you do go a little thick, what's our secret on how to dry paint really quickly, Robs? The old hair dryer. Everybody should have one. And the craft room. Yes. Okay. That is a essential... Uh, a tool to have in your craft room so if uh, you know go to uh, you can pick them up anywhere really for yeah, go to your grocery store and pick up the crappiest one we just yeah but you know what the, there are there are some that aren't as loud as others and and for me I just don't like a really loud hair dryer listening to it so um, some of the more expensive ones are quieter. You remember? Yeah. That we had those. And... Okay, so I've got that. I'm still working here. Well, you can you, go on to the next. You step keep three. working. I'm gonna keep talking. So we talked about how sometimes we want this to feel a little bit more rustic. Now this is okay if you leave it like that. But remember, we can't get too caught up in this because. This is only the background. You're gonna have this beautiful uh, piece of copper that's gonna be on there. And so that's really gonna take the focus. But of course, um, you know, we can always kind of work with our, our background a little bit. So we're gonna come back with our sandpaper. Make sure that this is dry. Um, my guy is still a little bit wet, but I'm gonna show you on on one of my other pieces. I'll kind of show you on here. If we want this to be a little bit lighter, because I know you have talked mm -hmm. about you actually, wanting I like mine yours right to now. be. Oh, okay. Um, you can actually come back and start sanding on it. And it actually starts pulling up some of the wood grain that you had back there. And you can already start seeing uh, more of the wood grain right in here. Of course, you do this on this step, not after you've got your, your feather on here. But um, that's gonna give you that distressed look. And it's super easy. You don't have to have any special chalk paints or, or any of that, because I know there's so many um, different kinds of paints that give you a distressed look, you know, even with wax. I don't even know if you've heard about that, Rob. What's that now? For, uh, they'll do like vintage furniture and they'll, they'll put some wax on there and then uh, put some paint on there. And, it's mm. a whole big to do. Um, we like to keep it simple. Yeah. All right, guys. Uh, I kind of like mine. Give us a comment below to see who you like better. <laughs> Don't forget to um, hit that like button if you see value that you're getting from us. I would appreciate it. And as uh, if you subscribe, the uh, the value of that is to uh, you're getting uh, our updated. Um, 
updated videos that we're going to put out. Oh, yeah. So. You guys will be the first to know. Um, again, we may even start doing uh, just some specials just for subscribers. But um, oh, yeah. we're still trying to figure it out. So uh, be patient with us. Here we go. So we've got this guy. Um, I think he's still a little bit wet. Yours is still a little wet. Gonna we're going to do a little bit of drying. And uh, we'll start back up in just a sec. Okay, we are going to start on our next step. So we've got our wood that I kind of uh, did a quick little blow dry on that. Um, and now we've got our feathers that we had already painted. Mm -hmm. And um, what I'm going to do is we had talked about, Robert had talked about how maybe he wanted a little bit more uh, fun going on in there. And this is dry, by the way. What you can always do is you can grab a piece of this um, sandpaper again and let's take for instance this little area right in here feels a little i'm not going to say it's dull but you, mm. we're using you as an example sure just come back in here and you can actually sand on here and what ends up happening is this copper kind of starts pulling up a little bit do you see that mm -hmm. looks pretty cool but now since you did it in one spot you've got to do it like maybe in a couple of others okay and um, I always like to maybe add a little bit of that copper, uh, pull up some of that copper with my sanding paper too. So I'm going to do the same thing. And I'm going to show you one side that has been sanded on mine and one side that has not been sanded. And you'll definitely see the difference here. Ooh. All right. Mm. I get a little excited. So you can kind of see. Yeah. Sanded, cool. not sanded. Mm -hmm. And that copper just really pulled up. And guys, don't get frustrated on a lot of this. Uh, I know some of you are like, man, I should first look better. Mine is not looking like this. It's all about practice. Practice, practice, practice. And I'm still learning every day, too. So we've got this. This is my new favorite. That looks kind of cool. Yeah. Well, you know, I always think outside of the box. I have been doing these for a while. I even did a butterfly with it. And um, I got a little creative. I even added a few little stones right in here. A little bling. You can even add some glitter on here as well. Is that, is that a color? Did you see? Is that is actually color? a yellow color. Oh, is it really? Yeah, yeah. And did they see the, uh, if y'all haven't seen the cactus, the cactus is pretty Yeah, cool the cactus too. turned out really nice. Okay, so now we're happy with our copper. And what we're going to do now is we've got to figure out how we're going to put this on here. Now, that would probably be the normal way to do it. But uh, remember, you guys are artsy craftsy. Mm -hmm. Maybe you decide, hey, I want it over here. Uh, I wouldn't recommend doing it like that unless uh, you're going to mount it quickly on a wall because this little guy coming off of there. Very sharp. Uh, well, it's very sharp and it'll still bend. Yeah. So I'm just going to be plain and simple. I'm just going to do right in the center. But here, check this out, guys. If you do it that way, you have room to put a saying right here and bring out that uh wood burning tool karina and this is a project that we're we're, we're going to show you guys in the future but this is a this is a wood burning tool yeah pyrography is a is, is the a proper term? way oh yeah. is that right so just imagine if you put um a little quote about um a feather or yeah, ins inspiration or something, or something like that um you definitely have room for that but we will be going over, uh, if we get enough um, feedback, we will be doing a video on um, the wood burning as well. Right. Well, the wood burning and then also um, a pen that imitates wood burning, um, that when you apply heat to the, uh, the pen, when you write something on right. that it, wood. Right, if you're afraid of, of, of heat. Of the heat, of the heat gun yeah. or the, heat, the, the uh, burning tool. 
There's actually a pen that, that will do the same effect. Okay, so um, I'm gonna leave this to Robert to kind of figure out how to do this next step because I, I kind of do everything backwards. Um, we are going to each take a, a handful of our, our little copper nails. And I'm not gonna tell you how many because again, it's up to you how many you feel makes your, your piece um, stable. Uh, it, I'm gonna go ahead and show you on here. I have only three on this guy, but on my cactus, holy moly, I kind of went crazy. I can see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I, I've got nine nails underneath there. So um, again, it depends on what shape you have. So we're gonna keep on going. I feel, you know what, I really like this. I kind of grew Yeah, that's kind of cool. Maybe I will do a little saying on, on the side like yeah, that. Yeah, I think, I think I might just put this offset too and... Um... So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna kind of imagine where I'm gonna put my holes and if you've got a better way of doing this, Rob. Yeah, not really. You know, I'm, I'm just, just gonna kind of, I'm gonna start from the stem because that's, that's a critical point. And we're just kind of tacking it in there to where once we're, once we know where our nail is gonna be, um, it's just gonna be like a little hole right in here. It'll, it'll leave a little mark. So I've got one right there. I'm gonna do a second one right here. One, two, three. And don't be too upset if you're like, oh, I really placed that one wrong. Um, just paint over it. The cool thing about a lot of these projects is if you mess up, uh, there's always a way to fix it. Yeah. Believe that's, me. That's the wonderful thing about art is that if you mess up, just... Paint over it. Paint over it. Or lift the paint up. Or even on these projects, you can always... Uh, Turn so let it me over go ahead and show side. the camera um, which uh, nails I got. I got a number 17, which are three-fourths inch um, in, I guess, the length. The length. But again, take a look at that head on here. You need to have a head on that nail. So don't sit there and get one that's got a tiny head. You, you need something for that feather to grip onto because we're going to be mounting that feather onto those nails. And if you didn't catch that, don't worry, we're gonna be putting all our supply list on our um, on our video down in the notes. And I think Robert is ready to start hammering. You ready? Yes? Yeah, let's all go right. for it. Tell me how far down this you, go. you know, I like to go far down enough to where um, it's secure and it's not just going to pop out. Good. All right. And uh, these nails, they're long enough that you don't really need this. The reason I brought this out is if you have a smaller nail, you can always use this to help and not... Um, not smash your finger. Not, yeah, not smash your finger. That's a good trick to learn how to do. And by the way, guys, Robert still has on his safety glasses. Just FYI. He gets after me all the time, too. Let's see. Let's see. I just have to put this one here. And you can kind of see on mine where I've got my marks. One, two, three, four. Now that one's a little bit crooked too. The one right by your thumb. This guy? Yeah, so just kind of tap it. How's that? That's good. And this guy, just tap it a little bit right over here. Okay, you're tap good. Tap a tap a tap uh, one thing, and I know this is kind of silly, guys, is that when you're hammering all of these in to make sure they're all about the same height, you don't want this one to be uh, in the wood really deep and this one not. So there, 
what you're going to be doing is at some point you're going to be kind of holding it up and making sure that you know all your nails are are about the same height Check that. No, that looks good. Hey, uh, remember, Robs, to yeah. uh, kind of bend it a little bit down if if it's kind of scooped up, so that okay, so that it sits on that uh, nail oh, really well. All right. And so he's checking it out right now, doing a few little. Minor modifications. Quality control. Yes. That's what he is. And you can kind of see right there. What, did you see one? No, I'm saying oh, yeah. Of, yeah, it looks pretty good. Yeah, and again, don't, don't get too, too caught up in it. Again, it's it's not a, an exact uh, engineering um, procedure. Okay. Um, We're going to fast forward here, guys. Uh, I got one here. Okay. Where is the next one? Right there. Okay. Where's the next one? Right there. How many did you put in there? Is this one? Yeah. All right, Karina. No, oh, those are the only four? Yeah. Okay. You think that's good? This one's a little... High? No, it was a little off. Yeah. Okay, you can put your hammer away. All right, so we've got all of our nails in here. I've got my glue, my E6000 or whatever other glue you, you want to use. Um, gloves. This stuff, um, again, you don't want to get that on your skin. I'll get you some gloves there. Uh, just, yeah, I just need one. Do you want hit uh, one girl over there? Mm -hmm. Okay, so now we need a little glob of glue on each. I think this might be a little. Oh, here it goes. So you're putting kind of a little glob on each nail, just like that. Be really careful. You don't want to go over the nail. And keep going. And one more. Uh-uh. I'm getting a little gooby over here. Save me. <laughs> All right. Keep going. Keep going. Oh, great. Ooh. <clears throat> Got your glasses on? Yeah. Not for safety, but just for seeing. You sure you don't want that extra glove? <laughs> No, thanks. Now well, you're getting drippy over here. Oh, no. Oh. And again, it's okay if you get glue in this area because your, um, cover your feather is going to cover it. I don't think you have to squeeze anymore. Oh, here. You yeah, get the, it's you, just... Yeah, you get the other part. You get the other side. Oh. Uh -oh. I'm gone. Cut that out. We'll cut that out in, in the edit here. Okay. Now we can take our gloves off for this. And here we go. Dun, dun, dun. Now for some odd reason, you screw this one up, just pick it up and place it where you need it. And once you do that, you are going to have to kind of press down on it a little bit. 
Uh, what I used to do when I used to do a, a lot of these was um, I would get something heavy just to kind of let it sit on there, uh, maybe for a few hours, and um, it, it actually was pretty sturdy. How heavy is heavy? That's fine, you know, just something that is... Like that? Yeah. Do you need one? Um, well, no, I'll, um, I'm actually just going to kind of show them okay. the side view. Ta-da! Beautiful. That's very nice. So now all we really need to do, guys, is on our back side, we're going to be putting a fastener. And again, this is up to you whether or not you want this kind. But you can get these at any Michaels or Hobby Lobby or mm. Walmart, wherever. It's just a picture hanger. Yeah, they're called sawtooth, sawtooth hangers. Yeah, and uh, just kind of a couple of screws right in there. and. Yeah. Man, doesn't that look professional? This is an actual little bird that I did, and you can see I put love, peace, and hope on yeah, that one. Good. Good so, one. All right, so I'm really hoping you guys found this video helpful, and if you did, give us a thumbs up and subscribe, subscribe down below uh, for our channel. Yeah. Hey, guys, this is Robert. And Karina. And we're a couple of crafters. Goodbye. Bye.